The light glowing from our Advent wreath is burning brighter. This radiance warms our hearts and fills us with joy. The Lord has done great things for us. Let us rejoice. From Psalm 126, 5 through 6. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. Light three candles, see them glow, brightly so that all may know how three candles show the way, making our darkness bright as God's day. Those who go out weeping, bear the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. Let's pray. Dear God, we carry many burdens and worry over many things. Help us to hear your promise in this Advent season that in hearing we may receive the Spirit's gift of joy. And may our spirits be kept sound at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. The first letter of Timothy, chapter 6, and we're going to read from verse 2 up to verse 10. And the message of today is, be careful. And you will know exactly what does it mean to be careful after today. But uh, let us first read now from the Word of God, the first letter of Timothy, chapter 6, from verse 2. Those who have believing masters should not show them disrespect just because they are fellow believers. Instead, they should serve them even better because their masters are dear to them as fellow believers and are devoted to the welfare of their slaves. There are the things you are to teach and insist on. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not agree to the sound instruction of our Lord Jesus Christ and to godly teaching, they are conceited and understand nothing. They have an unhealthy interest in controversies and quarrels about words that result in envy, strife, malicious talks, evil suspicions, and constant friction between people of corrupt mind who have been robbed of the truth and to think that godliness is a means to financial gain. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people, eager for money, have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. And this is the word of God. Dear brother and sister, if I start today by saying what we are busy doing is totally wrong. What we are busy doing in Advent time is totally wrong. Lighting this Christmas candles, listen to this message before the service, what the meaning of this candles is, what the meaning of Advent is, if I tell you this is totally wrong today, what is your response going to be? If I turn around and I see, do you see this Christmas tree? Some Christians will tell us today that this is a form of pagan beliefs. We are not allowed to have that in our houses. We are not allowed to have it in our church. This is is a symbol of paganism. This is a symbol of idolatry. What we're busy doing 
in Zion Reformed Church and in the Reformed Church in America is wrong. If we look at all these things, what will your response be? So brothers and sisters, the first thing that I want to share with you is that I think we get to a point in our belief in the world that we live in to start standing up for the things that we find valuable, valuable in our Christian faith. There is just so many attacks on Christianity today, their festivals, the way they do things. And the sad thing is, this is not only attacks from other religions to Christianity, but our biggest fear is Christians attacking other Christians. Different Christian groups that say, whatever you are doing, the way you do it, that is part of paganism. That is part of idolatry. So we have enemies. Do you want to know it? Christianity have more enemies than we can count. It's not just other faiths, but it is Christians fighting Christians as well. And why do I start with a topic like this today? Why do I want to share this with you? If you open Facebook, if you listen to some Christian groups that will say, whatever you do in the churches with this whole Advent time is totally wrong. It is a form of paganism. Then I want to stand up today and say, but why do we allow this in Zion Reformed Church today? Why do we allow a tree next to us which is a symbol of the season that we are in. Why do I want to stand up against those messages that say, the day that we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ is totally wrong. If you go back into the history, that was more or less the 25th of December, a time where it was a festival where they honor the sun gods in life. And now there was a change. Some political leader came and he changed that, or Christian leader came and changed that, and make the 25th of December a Christian day, a day where we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. So first, it's on a totally wrong day. Let us ask each other in this congregation today, and everybody that listened to this sermon do we claim that the 25th of December is the day of the birth of Jesus Christ? No, we don't claim that. But what do we do on this day? This is our time. This is our calendar. This is the 25th that we use to celebrate the birth of Jesus. And why do we celebrate it? Because we want to expose Jesus to the world. We want to share Jesus to the world. We want to tell the world the King is born. This is why we do it. We don't celebrate the 25th December. We celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. So then our enemies will come and say, you know what? The 25th December is a pagan day. You do wrong. Stop doing that. It's a different season that Jesus Christ was born in. Maybe they are right. But let's quickly go and look at the facts on the table. And, and you have to listen to this. So the end of the sermon, when I get to the place where we talk about salvation, that this will make sense. Yes, we don't claim that the 25th of December is the exact birth date of Jesus Christ. But let us go back to history. How many calendars do you think we work with only today in 2020? If you go and buy a calendar at a company, whichever store, you will see there's so many different celebrations, different religions that celebrate different things on different days. More or less 40 calendars that we use today in the world that we live in. But if you want to claim dates and things and how wrong these things is, let us go back. How many calendars all over the millennials are there? A lot. And if we want to try to focus on a day, I want to ask our enemies, people that try to take this Christmas season away from us, I want to ask him, so 
if calendars started more or less in the Bronze Age, with, for instance, the Sumerian, Egyptian, Assyrian calendars, they changed. Even in the Iron Age of time, things changed. There was calendars, the Babylonian calendar, the Hebrew calendar, the Roman calendar, the Gregorian calendar that we use. So many calendars, so many years that passed. So if we want to start claiming which day the birth of Jesus Christ is, and that's the important thing, the correct date, oh goodness. Good luck with finding that specific date over all all these thousands of years. We as Christians do not celebrate the 25th of December. We celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. We just use this day to celebrate it. Remember in our church uh, calendar, there's different seasons. We start with this Advent time to say, this is the birth of Jesus Christ. And then the next thing that they claim to be is that there is not even a God with the name Jesus Christ. Listen to this. And brothers and sisters, this is not Facebook stuff that Pastor Petrie is collecting now and say, this is the new stuff. This is old stuff going on. This is from the groups that they call themselves the Israelite vision. This is the groups that call themselves the, he, the Messianic Christians. It's a group, group that grow tremendously day by day. Who are they? They are the ones that say, listen, we believe in Jesus Christ, but we have to go back to that Jewish roots. We have to go back to that law to the Old Testament, the festivals in the Old Testament, the change of Sabbath day. We have to go back to the Old Testament things. But Jesus Christ is the Lord. Remember our text meditation? Be careful not to take grace away. Because it's grace that saves us, not all the customs that we follow. It's not Christmas that saves us the day. It's Jesus Christ, our Lord, that saves us on that day. We remind each other of that. Then, brothers and sisters, why is it important to listen to this message today? You live in exactly the same world that I live in. You hear this words. You try to focus on the salvation of Jesus Christ, but you hear even other Christians say, but what you do is a form of paganism. You have to stop it. And then we start doubting ourselves. Then we start asking the question, but are we really doing the right things? And then they will even use scripture uh, to prove this. And, and one of the famous scripture that they use in, is in Jeremiah and it's in Jeremiah 10, and I want to read this to you. Then they refer to the Christmas tree, just to prove that this is a form of paganism. Jeremiah 10, which is more or less here from 600 to 500 before Christ. They wrote these things. Listen to it. 500 to 600 before Christ. Listen to this. Hear what the Lord says to you, people of Israel. This is what the Lord says. Do not learn the ways of the nations or be terrified by signs in the heavens. Though the nations are terrified by them. For the practice of the peoples are worthless. They cut a tree out of the forest and the craftsman shapes it with his chisel they adorn it with silver and gold. They fasten it with hammer and nails, so it will not totter. Like a scarecrow in a cucumber field, their idols cannot speak. They must be carried because they cannot walk. Do not fear them. They can do no harm, nor can they do any good. This is Jeremiah 10. Now, brothers and sisters, take in consideration that the enemies of Christmas, the enemies of Advent will say, yeah, this whole new thing of Christmas, the festival that we celebrate is more or less 300 years after Christ. So, in this time of Jeremiah, 500, 600 before Christ, 
and 300 after Christ. You, you talk about 800, 900 years. Do you think that this Christmas tree next to me was what they were thinking eight, nine hundred years ago? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. What's the meaning of this? And why do we listen to these things? Because if we listen to this, it sounds like it can be a Christmas tree. Isn't that true? But this was about idolatry. Those nations that did the idolatry, that worshipped other gods except God, did the following. They took a tree out of the forest, they shape it, they carve it, until they get this God. Then they will take silver and gold and mix it with this godly figure that they have. And then they will worship it. So what does it say today? So I took this out of the parsonage. Listen to this. Out of the parsonage, this is supposed to be wrong, pagan. Gold, silver. So when we see the gold and silver ornaments on our trees, does that mean the same? Do you think five, six hundred before God in the time of Jeremiah, they had these ornaments? No, they don't have. Let's go to the idolatry in the time of Moses, the golden calf. Silver and gold was a perspective of value, an economic way of saying this is value. What did they do with the golden calf? It was not paint that they used. It was gold that they used because that gave it value. And they worshipped it. And Moses came down and said, don't you know what you do is wrong? You worship this. Brothers and sisters, the gold and the silver in Jeremiah is not the silver and gold Christmas ornaments. It's a real thing, economical value that they gave it. Of course, they don't have any other value to give uh, idolatry, a God created out of wood. Uh, the, the God out of wood doesn't have any value. But the moment they put this economic uh, perspective on it, it has more value. Brothers and sisters, we cannot even listen to these things anymore. We cannot allow ourselves to move away from the Christian festivals that we celebrate. I want to ask you today, and this is the end of today. In the Greek, they use the word kairos. What does kairos mean? Kairos mean, and I used it at a funeral or two before. Kairos is a, you, the word that the New Testament is using to say it's a God-given moment. And opposite the word kairos is the word chronos. Chronos means in its chronological time. It's calendar time. Does the Bible focus on calendar time? No. Does the Bible focus on Kairos time, which is Kairos time, a God-given moment, a God-given opportunity? Yes, the Bible focuses on that. So, brothers and sisters, how many times did we lose those festivals or moments in the past that the world, our enemies, other religions, our own Christians... Say, listen, we cannot celebrate these things anymore. But what do we do? We take this God-given opportunity on the 25th of December away to share it with the world that this is the day that we want to tell you Christ our King is born. He's there. He's alive. He is not a wooden God. He got value. And the value is not gold and silver that we add to this wooden God. Our God is the Son of God, the living God, the one that saved us, and that is giving us value. That's the difference between Jeremiah 10 and the Jesus Christ that we uh, worship today. A God that has value without silver, without gold, because He's the God, the King, the Savior. 
Now, brothers and sisters, you know, we love to hear the words of missionaries. We love to listen to them. We listen to how they take the opportunity, the world that they live in, in a pagan world, use those moments, those festivals, those ideas of the paganism, and bring Christianity into it. They use that as a Kairos moment, every moment, to bring Christianity into it. Isn't that true? Our missionaries all over the world, they just don't have it that easy that we have it here in the United States, in Sheffield, Iowa. They had to use those pagan moments to bring in Christianity. That's Kairos time. That's a God-given opportunity. So why do we allow that? But for us, as Christians, we get accused of using a tree using Christmas gifts, using lights, using Christmas ornaments. That's wrong. But what if we use Christmas as a Kairos time, a God-given moment? I think that's what we uh, do over this Christmas period. Use it as a God-given moment to tell the world who's the Savior. And that's the message of hope. So brothers and sisters, can we have a Christmas tree in the church? Yes, we can. Can you have it in your house? Yes, you can. Because who of us as Christians, when we see the Christmas tree, we worship it. No, we don't do it. We know this is just a symbol of the season. Just as we have a pumpkin for fall. Why do we allow other people to influence us, to push us in a corner, and we lose a moment where we can share to the world who's our Savior. Why do we allow these things? It's time that we stop it. It's time that we use this season to tell it to the world. Share it with them. It's not about jingle bells. We know it's not about jingle bells. I listened to Yannette yesterday, and she doesn't even know that I listened to it. How she sat with Marley and explained to her exactly what happened in Christmas time. That's what Christian parents do. Why do we need to take that away? We have to stop. Let the world steal our peace. Other religions, some Christian friends, take away the Kairos time that we have. Celebrate Christmas. Do it with so much passion. Enjoy every moment because you know why we do this. It's a festival where we worship the birth of the King of Kings. Our Almighty God, the Son of God, the Anointed of God. I want to end, of this, end this sermon by saying, say you can only use the holy names of God. The Hebrew names, the Greek names. And there's no such thing as a Jesus Christ. This is a name that we gave God. Christmas, Christ, in the Antimus, together. You cannot do it because we don't have that as this holy name of God. And then I open my New Testament Greek Bible. And you know what word do I find in there? Jesus Christus. Jesus Christ. You know, why don't they like the word Jesus Christ? Because Jewish people do not believe in Jesus Christ. They don't believe that the Son of God came to this earth to save us. We listen to so many voices. We get distracted. Use this Christmas as a Kairos moment. God given moment to share the gospel of Jesus. Amen.